Hi, my name is Anissa Carrascal, and I'm a mental health nurse working for the Canadian Mental Health Association. I have over nine years of experience serving individuals experiencing mental illnesses and addictions, both in hospital and community settings. I wanted to talk about a subject that many of you may have heard on the news. In recent times, uh, there have been several reports uh, and is of incidents of people experiencing a mental health crisis in the community that ended up dying uh, during encounters with the police. Most people tend to reduce the problem to a lack of training of police officers. So I'm here to give you another perspective. From professional experiences and observations, I find that the design of our current mental health system is deeply flawed and needs a desperate overhaul. I'm going to try to exemplify this with an, like a, a case, an autotypical case. Let's take uh, John Smith. He suffers from schizophrenia. He's 40 years old and has no family or support system. John also lives on the streets because the waiting list for affordable housing is at least 12 years long at this time. He takes medications only when he has access to them and manages his symptoms mostly with illegal substances. He gets into a lot of trouble because when he's experiences psychosis, he can become quite aggressive. He has a case manager that provides him with basic mental health services in the community. But because John doesn't have a fixed address and he's always on the go, he doesn't see his case manager regularly. He has been brought to hospital many, many times. But in the majority of cases, he gets discharged right from the ER or as soon as the medications kick in. Whenever John gets discharged, his case manager does not get notified by the hospital. In fact, he, his case manager is not involved in the discharge planning and the follow-up care at all. Therefore, when John gets discharged and hits the streets, he basically just goes back to his regular activities and in many cases, he doesn't even notify his no social worker that he has been in hospital. So he doesn't have the support to attend follow-up appointments or get medications from the pharmacy. And since he's not following treatment, his mental health keeps getting worse and worse and his behavior uh, turns more erratic and at times aggressive. At this point, if he has an encounter with the police, chances are he will be too sick to control his own behavior and may end up seriously hurt or even dead. This example shows some of the cracks in the current mental health system. And while it is true that the police officers required more training to manage mental health crises, it is also needed to look at the entire system and fix the things that are not working right now. For example, there is a desperate need of affordable housing in our city. It is the most basic and important piece to start solving the mental health crisis. Second, there is a severe shortage of mental health service providers, both in hospital and community settings. In hospitals, this means longer waiting times for people experiencing mental health crisis. This also means that the determination of keeping or discharging a patient sometimes is done on a 15 minute assessment. On the other hand, there are not enough community mental health services to attend the number of people needing the services. For example, the waiting list for a high intensity program like an ACT team can be as long as two years. What is more, most community organizations are nonprofits, therefore, their salary rates are much lower than hospital rates. Just as an example, most mental health workers in the community have not received a raise in 14 years. 
Since most work in non-unionized environments, they have little chance to ever improve their rates. This is a factor that shows in the low numbers of professionals willing to work in the mental health sector in community settings. Last, there's very little communication and interaction between hospitals and community services. This leaves a huge gap in the continuation of care for people with mental illnesses and addictions. Community organizations very rarely get notified that their clients are admitted to hospital. What is worse, they are very rarely asked to participate in the discharge planning. There's also a lack of a uniform records system that can be accessed by both hospital and community services that compiles all the records involving a particular person. Because of this, both hospitals and community services have big information gaps that prevent them to create a cohesive treatment plan. These are only a few examples of things that are going wrong with our current mental health system. But I wanted to give you this insight uh, so you can understand that what you see on the TV, in the news, is just a fraction of the real problem. Thank you.